Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment of Health Professional Radio. In this segment, we'll be speaking with Meredith Manning. Joining us here, President of the Americas at Pharmacentia. Uh, Pharmacentia is a global biotech. Uh, she's going to talk about the company's work using the power of interferon. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Meredith Manning, thank you so much for taking the time with us. Hi, Neil. Thank you for inviting us to attend your show. As uh, president of the Americas at Pharmacentia, give us a bit of an insight into your professional background and talk a bit about Pharmacentia's goal. Absolutely. So um, I've had the opportunity to be in healthcare and specifically in biotech and pharma for, uh, gosh, almost 30 years now. Um, you know, I grew up in a household where my father was a physician and um, I had the opportunity to see him work really closely with patients and have the opportunity to change lives. So I kind of grew up in that healthcare household. And um, as I moved in through my career, I really started um, at a you know small biotechs and then went on to work at large pharmaceutical companies. And my whole career, I really wanted to have the opportunity to impact people's lives in a positive manner. Um, so I've been for almost 30 years, as I've mentioned, in biotech and, and in pharma. And then recently, about three years ago, I had the opportunity to meet our CEO and our chairwoman of Pharma Sencha. Uh, this was right before the pandemic, so I met them in January. Uh, we're located or headquarters in, in Taiwan. So I had the opportunity. They were here in the United States, and I met with them um, briefly and then continued to meet with them over a series of about uh, five to six days, and we just really connected. Um, I believed in, in their vision and what they were trying to create with Pharma Sencha and specifically with launching their first commercial product or the first medicine that they were launching, which is called Ropeg Interferon Alpha 2B or Best Remy. And I really liked the vision that they had set forth. And uh, that was really to bring a new uh, product into the market to really set up a global company that could capitalize on the power of interferons as we're talking about today. And so that was really interesting for me. And to help them bring the science and the technology that they had innovated over in Taiwan into the U.S. was was quite a challenge and something that I was excited to help them with. Interferon it isn't new. Um, give us a brief look into the history of interferon and talk about this renewed interest in its treatment for certain cancers. Yeah, interferon is definitely not new. So it actually has been around for uh, decades and actually... I think probably really was started to be uh, studied in earnest probably back in the 50s, 1950s or 1960s. Um, there was this whole awakening really in the 1980s. It's interesting. There's a Time magazine article um, in March 1980 that said that uh, they called it the if drug, meaning if it could cure cancer, if um, there was so much potential and, and hope for interferons. Uh, interferons is naturally occurring in your body, and with some of these additional products that were being developed, the hope was that they could stimulate the interferon within your body or the interferon genes um, to actually fight viruses, to fight infections, to fight diseases, and ultimately to fight cancer. Um, really, what they were grappling with back in the 80s were really three things. One, could they prove that it was efficacious in many different um, disease states and cancers? Uh, but most importantly, could they manufacture interferons on a mass scale uh, to help the global population? And then the third component was, could they actually develop it such that it was uh, tolerable. Interferons is very potent. You know, when we get um, flus or um, other 
you know, diseases, but mostly flus, and you can feel the interferons, you know, being stimulated in your body, that's what causes like the, the chills mm -hmm. or body aches, et cetera. So interferons can actually be um, pretty intolerable. So that's what they were trying to grapple with in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. Um, and this is where our CEO really invested a lot of his time in developing interferons and trying to see one can we actually demonstrate the efficacy, but then can we manufacture it, interferons in a way that makes them tolerable, that can you can utilize it in long-term diseases, in cancers, et cetera. Um, and so that, that was really his hypothesis for um, PharmaCentia and for Ropeg interferon. And we're really excited that we were approved uh, for a cancer, a rare blood cancer called polycythemia vera. And um, that has been our hypothesis, and, and we believe that we're able to bring a medicine that can be used in cancer um, in a long-term chronic cancer. So we're excited uh, that we're proving out that hypothesis. How is your new uh, compound, Bisremi, different uh, than other treatments for PV? Sure. So the way that we're different versus other interferons, first I'll tackle that question, Neil, is um, throughout the, the years and the decades, first there was just uh, the, the natural form of interferon, and then we began to pegylate. So pegylation is really adding on um, an additional molecule that can extend both the half-life or really work on the pharmacokinetics, so the drug stays around in your body longer, and then also working on the pharmacodynamics. So that is, you know, how much um, can the drug be, how much volume of the drug can be in your body. So by developing a technology, this monopegylated or single-site pegylation um, it's very different than the other pegylated interferons that have multiple site pegylations. This uh, has helped us with both our PK or our pharmacokinetics as well as our PD, our pharmacodynamics. So our hypothesis with, um, with ROPEG is by being able to improve the pharmacodynamics and the pharmacokinetics, one with the PK, um, that reduces the number of doses that you have to take or taking it every two weeks or eventually taking it once a month. And so that's how we differ versus other interferons, as well as having the opportunity to have broader exposure because it can, quote unquote, last longer in the body um, versus other treatments in PV. So really the current, Neil, the current standard of care with PV is either a phlebotomy. Um, so that is, um, you know, taking blood out of the, out of the body to uh, debulk your blood, if you will, um, or uh, focusing on taking hydroxyurea, which is a chemotherapy, pretty old chemotherapy that's been around for about 50 years. Um, and that's been used quite a bit in other blood disorders like sickle cell, as well as uh, PV and other uh, myeloproliferative neoplasms. And then recently in 2014, um, there was a JAK2 inhibitor um, that was approved for PV, specifically focusing on symptom control and reducing uh, the size of the spleen, which can be a side effect of having the disease, which is having an enlarged spleen. Um, so there hasn't been a lot of innovation in PV lately. Uh, so a lot of the clinicians, healthcare providers, uh, physicians, as well as patients and caregivers have been uh, very excited and waiting for uh, best Remy to come on the market um, in anticipation of, of something different. Where can listeners go to get more information about Best Remy and Pharmacentia? Yeah, so the best place, obviously, is 
is the internet, our website. Um, so going to www.bestremi.com, and that's B E S R E M I.com, or also going to um, our website on Pharma Sencha. So uh, www.pharmacentia.com, which is P H A R M A E S S E N T I A dot com. Uh, also, another great place uh, for people to go to is pharmacentiasource.com, and that actually is um, beneficial to learn more about the product and the services that we offer to patients. Meredith, thank you so much for lending us some of your time this morning here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you, Neil. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Meredith Manning. Audio copies of this program are available at HPI. FM and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at Anchor, Spotify, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.